Hey everybody, Mike from Factory Connection here, and today we're going to talk about the AER48 fork. So this is a fork where you have damping control on one side and then the air fork control is on the other. The air fork is actually on the brake side and the damper fork is on the throttle side. Uh, the damper fork has a compression clicker and a rebound clicker at the bottom, kind of similar to a twin chamber fork, which in fact it is a twin chamber design. So the inner hydraulics are a sealed unit, uh, sealed from the outer oil and then you know there's an outer oil that's working with the air spring in that fork leg. As you come back to this air side now, um, an air fork is an air fork to a point and I'll explain what I, why I'm saying that. All air forks have some sort of an inner chamber or a mainspring pressure. That's the, the piece that's replacing the main coil spring in the fork. We have to increase the pressure in that chamber in order to support the motorcycle with all of its weight and then of course the movement and what we're looking for for a spring rate. Due to that amount of pressure internally there would be an excess of preload to the point that it would become almost very difficult to get the fork to move. So be it this fork, be it the KYB PSF fork, be it the Showa TAC fork, there's always something combating that preload effect of all that main pressure in this, in this principal area. So in the PSF fork, it's actually a mechanical spring. In the TAC fork, it's actually another air chamber. And in this fork, they've gone about it in a different way. So what happens with this one is, this guy goes in here, and this is your air cylinder. This gets charged to, you know, that initial pressure, let's say about 150 or so pounds, depending on your bike and how much you weigh and all that good stuff. So obviously, if we were to charge this to 150 pounds, it would be very difficult to be able to move it in. So Actually right here, I think you're going to see a close-up of this in a little bit, there's a notch. So this notch, when this is at the fully extended position, allows the air to bleed from this side to that side. So what that does is it actually balances the air pressures between this main pressure and this um, negative chamber or this balance chamber. As soon as there's movement, this guy steps away from this notch now we've got two separate chambers and we're sealed. So there's a quad ring here. As this is coming up during a compression stroke, we're increasing the pressure here. So that's your mainspring doing its job. And then that negative piece is going away because the, the, the chamber is actually expanding. As this guy comes back and we're on rebound, this guy, because it's coming back, it's actually compressing that negative chamber or that balance chamber. And this is what provides for a normal um, top out feel or coming back to the fully extended position you don't have a hard top out because this would be overly preloaded but now that this chamber is here and it's actually building pressure things feel like a normal fork. So this is a new way to do it. Um, it's kind of innovative and different. It's extremely simple. There's only one air pressure to fill so you fill that inner air pressure through this one Schrader valve and you're pretty much done. Everything else is taken care of. It's lightweight. There's no mechanical spring inside. Again, it's simple. You don't have multiple chambers to fill. So it's kind of a, kind of a good thing for you guys out there in the field. It's just set the one pressure and you're done. Should for any reason the fork top out due to setting, due to whatever you're doing on the bike, there is a top out spring here. So if this were to top out extremely hard, then that spring can be compressed and that stops a mechanical you know, top out situation from happening. And typically all forks have something of that manner to it. So this is not new, it's, it's in there and that's its job. So you need that guy in there so that as the fork comes the full extension it wouldn't just lock out mechanically because if you were to do that repetitively you can end up with some mechanical problems. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit today about the AER48 fork and uh, we hope to see you soon at the races.